please contribute. It really helps my independent, honest journalism. People find it really hard to believe me when I say my EV charging costs are really, really low. So I kept a log for the last six weeks of exactly how much it cost to charge me from my home charger, mostly using solar from my roof and a tiny bit of grid electricity as well. And I've compared it to all the major fast, slow and super fast chargers around the inner west of Sydney where I live. And I'll show you exactly how much they cost. And also at the end, compare with what a similar size petrol hatchback to my MG477 long range would cost as well. So the first thing we're gonna look at is how much does electricity cost per kilowatt hour? That's how electric car charging is measured instead of liters for petrol or diesel. Right, so for home charging, I'm assuming that my solar feed-in tariff, which is five cents, is lost for every kilowatt hour I use from solar generated on my roof. And I've also included the tiny amount of grid electricity used as my charger was trying to match solar output spare usage available. Okay, as you can see, charging from home, using my home EV charger, using mostly solar was super cheap, only six cents per kilowatt hour. In comparison, the two slow pole charging options nearby for public charging are AGL, which is 38 cents all day or night, or EVX, that's their peak charge of 50 cents per kilowatt hour. It's cheaper in the middle of the night, but I'm not gonna park my car several streets away in the middle of the night. Other people might, but I'm not gonna do that. Okay, then we get to the fast chargers. Charge Fox at a Woolworths nearby is 55 cents per kilowatt hour. It's a lot faster than those pole chargers, so you pay a little bit more. Then EV Networks at Marrickville Metro, that's 68 cents per kilowatt hour. That's getting a bit expensive. A bit more than Woolworths, as you can see, for almost the same speed. Then there's EV networks at IKEA Tempe. That's a lot faster. That's properly fast. More than a, what a lot of electric cars can charge at. That's 75 cents per kilowatt hour. And then we get to Tesla Alexandria, which is open to all electric cars of any brand. Right, so if you have a member price with them, it's 56 cents per kilowatt hour. That's the price that any Tesla gets by default or any non-Tesla gets if you pay $9.99 per month membership fee to reduce the price per kilowatt hour. If you want to use Tesla Alexandria without being a member, it's much more expensive. It's 74 cents per kilowatt hour. But you'll note down the bottom that the Tesla charger is also the fastest of all the different charging networks available in my area. So if I was in a rush, I would charge there. If I needed to fill my car really fast, maybe I was leaving on a long trip the next day or suddenly, yeah, that's what I would do. And my second option would be the EV Networks Ultra Fast 150. And if I wasn't really in a rush, I wouldn't really bother using any of those other ones because they just cost so much more than home charging. It doesn't make sense. As you can guess, looking at this second graph of how much EV charging would cost in total for six weeks across different options in my area, charging at home from my home charger, almost mostly from solar. So the 621 is what it would cost a little bit extra in my home electricity bill, $6.21. I'm not kidding. For six weeks, that's how cheap it is. It's amazing. My relatives didn't understand how it could possibly be so cheap to drive for six weeks. Anyway, let's compare to the other options. The pole chargers in my area, they're more, obviously, $36.52 for AGL and $48.05 for EVX. These are the kind of options that people would use if they had, say, an apartment. 
or a house that they couldn't park in front of. Those are the cheapest options if you're not in a rush because they're not very fast. At least they're there. They're growing in numbers now. So that's good. Okay, then we get to the faster DC options. Charging at the Woolworths in Ashfield, if I'd done it for the whole six weeks for all my charging, would have been $52.86. Charging at the EV Networks charger at Marrickville Metro while I do my weekly shopping there would have cost $65.35. Going to EV IKEA Tempe would have cost $72.08. That's the most expensive, slightly. And then you have the two other options. Tesla, again, the member price, if you own a Tesla is $53.82. And if you don't own a Tesla, it's $71.11. You can get that cheaper 5382 price if you char if you pay $9.99 per month subscription fee for a Tesla charging membership. As you can see, even just for one month, even for not much driving, you can still save in total by buying the Tesla member price and paying 5382 plus 999. If you're the kind of person who's impatient and in a rush and charging a lot, that's the option I would use. But if you don't, and you don't have a home charger, I would use the pole chargers. Look for the cheapest one, an AGL one if you can, an EVX one if you can't. So what's the story? Well, the story is <laughs> home charging is so cheap. It's insanely cheap. We need to enable home charging for as many people as possible, because that's what's gonna encourage people with petrol cars to switch over. I calculated estimating say five liters per hundred kilometers and a petrol price of about $1.75, which is what it is at the moment in my area, that a petrol hatchback would have cost about $56 to charge compared to all these other options for the last six weeks to travel the same distance. As you can see, pole charging and the Woolworths charger are both cheap or all cheaper than that. And the home charging option is way, way cheaper than that. DC fast charging is mostly more expensive than a petrol hatchback would be. But you got to remember, if you have an electric car, the cost is not only what's coming out of your wallet. The cost is also to the environment. If you've got a petrol car instead, you'll be spewing out toxic pollution to everyone, which is bad for their health and bad for climate change. If you have an electric car, doesn't matter which charging option you use, you've got zero tailpipe emissions and you're not contributing anywhere near as much to climate change. So be glad about that. Even if you have to DC fast charge all the time, maybe you're an Uber driver, for example. Anyway. That's my explanation of how insanely cheap it is to charge from home using mostly electricity spare from your solar generation. It's really worth it. Catch you later. Thanks for liking, subscribing and sharing my videos. It really helps me make more videos like this for you. And have a look at the suggested videos up above. I'm pretty sure you'll like those as well. Thanks and see you later.